In the intense world of MMA, where fighters give every ounce of their potential in the cage, you'd think judges would see the same fight, right? But what happens when the judges watching the same battle see two completely different fights? At number 10, we have Rafian Stotts versus Danny Sabatello. Despite the pre-fight trash talk generating excitement, the actual bout between Stotts and Sabatello proved less thrilling. Stotts utilized his wrestling to control Sabatello on the ground, but there were stand-up moments where Stotts impressed. Many viewers and two or three judges believe Stotts won rounds two, three, and five due to his activity. However, Judge Douglas Crosby stirred controversy by awarding every round to Sabatello, defending his decision on social media by emphasizing the importance of effective grappling alongside striking. Interpretation of his explanation remains subjective. Coming in at number nine, we have Marlon Marais versus John Dodson. The intense band and weight battle between the magician Marlon Marais and One Punch Man John Dodson, the judge's decision is stirring debate. I must agree that Marlon clinched two rounds, but the twist? One judge awarded Dodson all three rounds, while the other two favored Marias. The real head scratcher in the first round, where Dodson had a crucial knockdown, did the judges nail it or drop the ball? Coming in at number eight is Tim Bosch versus Clarence Byron Dollarway. A fight night filled with anticipation as Tim Bosch was set to face Luke Rockhold, but oh the drama. Rockhold's knee took a hit and in strolls Clarence Byron Dollarway, like a superhero on short notice. The ensuing brawl, pure entertainment. It had more twist than a pretzel, and it's got many wondering. Fight of the night? Well, not so fast. Gilbert Melendez and Diego Sanchez were on the same card, bringing the heat. But then the judges dropped a bombshell. Two of them gave Bosch a nod, despite the match looking like a dollar weight treasure hunt. And the real kicker? One judge called it a draw because of an eye poke. I mean, come on. Only one media maverick saw it for Bosch. Coming in at number 7 is Darren Crickshank versus Eve Edwards. This is a prime example of the subjectivity of the term effective. Edwards and Crickshank's match, arranged on short notice for a fight night prelim, resemble more of a sparring session with no significant moments. According to the criteria, judges should prioritize aggression and octagon control. In this scenario, three rounds should favor Edwards due to his cage control. However, only Judge Terry Bulk shared this view scoring all 10 rounds in his favor. The other two judges reversed their decision, awarding Darren a 30-27 victory. Up next at number 6 is Matt Serra versus Chris Lytle. Matt Serra's win in this fight had far-reaching consequences, leading to his victory in the Ultimate Fighter comeback season and his triumph over George St. Pierre. In an alternate scenario, Chris Lytle could have claimed Michael Bisping's middleweight title. However, the judges' decisions in this bout were questionable. While five metrics favored Lytle, two out of three judges awarded every round to Sarah, and Judge Lester Griffin supported Lytle. At number five, we have Ross Pearson versus Stevie Ray. One of the UFC's worst decisions saw Ross Pearson wrongly defeated by Diego Sanchez. Judge Andreas Grinner, perhaps seeking retribution, awarded an inexplicable 30-27 decision win to Pearson over Stevie Ray. While this fight won't enter the Hall of Fame, there was enough action to make it clear that the Harlem Heat member deserved all three rounds. A consensus shared by the other judges and most of the media. Grinner's scoring remains a puzzle, as it's unclear why he favored Pearson so decisively based on the criteria. Coming in at number 4, we have Carlos Condit and Robbie Lawler. During UFC 195, on January 2nd, 2016, a pivotal welterweight title bout unfolded between Carlos Condit and Robbie Lawler. Throughout the intense five rounds, both fighters showcase impressive striking skills, with Condit displaying a diverse array of kicks and punches, while Lawler relied on his power and resilience. However, when the judges' scorecards were unveiled, two of the three judges awarded the split decision victory to Lawler, causing widespread controversy. At number three, we have Darren Elkins versus Lucas Martinez. In 2014, during a bout in Rio, Darren Elkins faced Lucas Martinez. Elkins dominated the fight, impressing most media and two judges who scored at three rounds to none in his favor due to his relentless pursuit of takedowns. However, Judge Vinicius' lens consistently favored Lucas, possibly due to his focus on Martinez's strikes as the only effective actions or a lack of understanding of the fight's dynamics. At number two, we have Jamie Varner versus Melvin Gillard. The fight between Varner and Gillard, initially set for the Ultimate Fighter finale but rescheduled for UFC 155, Due to Jamie's illness, the judges' scoring left many baffled. It was a one-sided affair, with the second round being the only possible point of contention, albeit generously. When the fight returned to stand-up in the final moments, Joe Rogan suggested Gillard needed a stoppage because he seemed to be losing on the scorecards. However, Adelaide Bird sighed differently. 
disagreeing with the other judges who unanimously favored Barnum. And finally, at number one, we have Marlon Vera versus Corey Sandhagen. Corey Sandhagen's baffled expression when Marlon Vera received the first score from Bruce Buffer summed up the confusion surrounding this pivotal Bantamweight main event. Sandhagen dominated every round and consensus lead heavily towards a 50-45 victory. However, Sal Diamato inexplicably scored at 50-45 for Vera, while Chris Lee only gave Vera the third round. The most egregious mistake came from Judge Joel Hayda, who awarded Vera rounds three, four, and five. What's your take on the controversial decisions made by MMA judges? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.